So good afternoon, everyone. So just now there are uh, like two gentlemen ask me uh, whether this presentation will be Chinese or in English. So don't worry, it will be English, and I can speak Chinese. So if you have a question you want to ask in Chinese, you can also ask me. So call me the best presenter this time. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm Fu Chiao from China Mobile. Uh, I guess uh, my topic is uh, not like like. Uh, edge computing or blockchain or any that hot topic. Sometimes I actually uh, kind of admire uh, their topics, but my topic somehow uh, includes uh, like uh, CI, a lot of difficult things that we met when we are doing all these NFE things. Um, but hope it will interest all of you because uh, this is uh, my real world. So first some introduction about myself. We actually have a uh, uh, reorg uh, early this year, so now I'm in the uh, what we call it as a network uh, network cloud uh, continuous delivery center. I mean that center. So the, the the name is quite confusing actually sometimes. So I'm now currently leading our developer team for in that center, and basically we're trying to do some uh, automation for the uh, delivery for our NFE cloud. So, uh, so uh, this is uh, probably the, the contents for today. I think that probably I will share first uh, why we as operators begin to pay attention to the uh, integration and delivery, which uh, seems like uh, just a problem for vendors beforehand. And secondly is uh, how we actually uh, can improve that. And third is about something that we are actually doing in China, China Mobile is the auto and automatic delivery tool sets. And fourth one, I'm very happy that I eventually have some best practice that I can share with you, uh, which we actually have uh, quite good experience bringing up uh, an, a huge resource pool uh, within this year. So uh, let's uh, try to begin. So. NFE cloud, this is actually an old topic. Uh, it, it actually is like, uh, I guess it's almost seven years when SC first published the NFE white paper talking about the whole concept here. Operators, vendors actually puts a lot of money in this, but I have to say it's, it's still quite difficult to for NFE to actually deploy. I guess this is the same experience for most of the operators and vendors. So why is that? From my from my team's perspective, probably the integration is the most uh, difficult one, because uh, currently most of the uh, virtualized clouds that are actually deployed in operators, they are like still bounded to some uh, single vendors of uh, software, and that actually keeps uh, operators uh, ex experienced the whole benefits that uh, the NFE technology can bring to them. Like uh, they cannot enjoy the, the reduce of cost. They cannot actually uh, enjoy uh, improving of efficiency because they, they still closely rely on the uh, the, the uh, um, uh, software vendor provider. So we guess that probably the, the the operators probably need to look inside if they want to actually enjoy this new technology. Probably they also need to improve their own capability. I guess this is also something that uh, gradually being realized by a lot of operators. Like uh, just uh, uh, last month, in that's two months actually, uh, in September, I heard uh, the uh, network VP from AT&T, Amy, uh, talks, uh, gives a speech in the ONI Summit uh, in Antwerp. And she mentioned about that uh, the uh, NFE cloud is actually growing from virtualized to white, white box, and probably now we are at the process for automation. By automation, he mentioned about a lot about airship, about CNTD. I guess probably the most uh, meaning for that one is actually operators need to improve their actually capability to use this network. So I guess that is also something that. Uh, we are actually targeting for. Yesterday I also listened to one of the speech from China Telecom. Uh, they also mentioned about they are working on some automated testing tools, and I guess that is also for the same approach. So for us, 
we are actually also looking deep uh, into the details of the whole integration of NFV and hope that we could improve our capability to do so, so that we could eventually solve the whole, whole mass of uh, NFV. So uh, NFV integration, uh, first I want to make the con concept quite clear so that people will not misunderstood about uh, what I'm talking about. So this is just the, the, the whole process, how you bring up the whole cloud. It's actually almost the same as what we are doing with public and p private cloud. So I guess we actually can have a lot of uh, experience and lessons learned from those clouds. But also NFV have their own uh, problems like the, the scalability, like the, the different vendors from Telco. Uh, that probably is uh, some difference here. So uh, integration uh, changes actually a lot. Uh, traditionally for uh, operators, for Telco operators especially, integration just uh, means that uh, a, a huge box bring into their central office. They will just uh, make a few well connected and then it's all over. But now actually this whole thing changed a lot for them. First, the scale is actually huge for them. Taking this year, uh, China Mobile is actually building our phase one of our network cloud, which includes uh, 20,000 servers, 4,000 uh, uh, switches, and uh, the network connection is actually over uh, 180,000 lines so th that work is actually almost impossible for us to actually do that and it's quite complicated and uh, also the problem uh, another problem is about multi-vendor traditionally we actually rely on, on one single vendor to be as the integrator so and we don't need to worry about uh, anything else but now when you come when you go to like uh, uh, NFV we, we this time we actually have uh, 10 more vendors, like we have uh, different vendors for servers, for switches. We, had two, we have two different integrators actually happens and uh, lots of uh, different software vendors as well. So this actually gives us a lot of challenges, which is totally different from what we are doing in the past. And we have a uh, lot of uh, requirements and ex expectations from different department, like uh, they will require us to, to reduce the whole integration time. They would like us to reduce the whole cost to do the integration. And also they will expect to have an overall test for all the, uh, all the lines and the, 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 the um, servers and switches uh, for each single module. And, uh, and also reduce manual um, uh, efforts, a lot of that requirement. So how can we actually face all these things? and really makes the, uh, uh, the, the telco operators enjoy the, the whole benefits. So we are thinking about probably the, 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 the integration for NFV cloud is the key. And where actually we need to look into, we think there are three key components that actually uh, makes this integration not good for now and probably can improve in the future. One is actually the wor working flow. Um, traditionally, telco operators is like they, they they care less about this whole working flow. It's something that should be taken care of uh, by the vendors, by the integrators. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, when you have multiple vendors to to join side, probably it's the time that uh, operators need to look into this working flow. So we actually, uh, in the beginning of this year, we actually spent a lot of times uh, talking with different vendors, integrators, like to see actually, is there anything that we actually uh, can do previous to the whole integration, whether there is any uh, process we could do simultaneously. So this uh, looking into working flow actually helps a lot to improve the whole efficiency. And the second one is uh, automatic tools, which uh, apparently that's very important. And the third one is about the unified data. We actually have that kind of experience is that we, we ask, uh, we have one integrator from one uh, vendor, vendor A, and vendor A uh, will integrate some software from vendor B. So he basically just uh, send uh, a tab uh, table sheet uh, asking uh, some uh, parameters there. And then vendor B just reply with them, um, uh, a table sh sheet, but it's uh, actually according to vendor B's uh, format. <laughs> so they are just uh, like uh, on and on, just uh, debating on how we you actually call this the network, 
or <laughs> things like that. So probably we think that we, we need to make some common language between these silly things. So uh, beginning last year, actually, we tried to define some unified data through the whole integration area. So this year, we actually try to uh, use a common uh, data uh, definition for our uh, hardware integration, and, and it really helps a lot. The good thing is that when we finish the hardware integration, all the software vendors, when they get into this uh, this uh, resource pool, they don't need actually to check the whole resources again like before, because they already have the real data here, and it's all in a common language format. So I will go to uh, details. Like for the standard working flow, there are like uh, three main things we actually uh, improve. One is that we actually parallelize some of the process, like I just uh, mentioned. And then the second thing is important to us is we do some pre-configuration. There are lots of things actually the, the, the servers, the switch vendors can do before, before they actually ship their equipment to our central office. And these really helps a lot. And they also, they have the great willingness to do so because that will save their time to actually do some on-site configuration. And third, uh, we actually have a lab pre-testing, making sure that everything that gets into our central office, we have some tests beforehand, making sure it's all right before that. And this actually helps us to improve the whole flow. And second is about what I said about uh, unified data. This uh, low-level design, I guess every vendor ha uh, has that, but as every vendor has a quite different one from each other. So we, we guess that this whole data is a soul for the integration, and probably we need to define some com common language be between these, thi these things. So we try to, uh, you know, we have our, like, uh, uh, in Chinese, we call it uh, yuan, but in English, probably it's something like a design department in the telco that will actually design the, the whole uh, things for the uh, resource pool. Not that details, but a lot of rules there. So we are doing some automation by translating that design doc into uh, a low level design so that uh, the, the vendors can do uh, all the things accordingly. So you can see that we have this uh, design doc. It's here. This is generated by, um, generate by some design department, and we will confi uh, fun configure that into the the in the hardware uh, load the LLD, and then to the software LLD. And eventually, this is also quite an important data source for us to do the acceptance test. And last is about test uh, tools automation. This one is uh, some, somehow I don't think I need to spend too much time talk, talking about that in OpenStack Summit because uh, people here understand about automation and uh, understand about the importance for this. But actually, there are lots of actually open source tools to do this. Yesterday, from the China Telecom's uh, speech, they also mentioned they are using Dovetail and uh, OVP from OPNFV. I guess that's good news. We are also utilizing all these. Uh, we are using Ansible. Uh, we are using like uh, uh, Tempest, really a lot of uh, these things. And also we are developing our own tools in order to fit into the gap. So uh, then I will use a full session actually to introduce about our tools. Uh, forgive me about the name. We actually are not quite so serious about that at the beginning. But uh, it, it calls auto. <laughs> It actually, uh, what we're actually planning to is that we want to figure out whether there are any uh, gaps that actually we, are, we, we actually need to do the whole automatic integration through the whole loop. So we look into the vendors' uh, tools, we look into open source tools. If we can hardly find any that actually fits in our requirements, we, we try to develop some of our own tools. So now you can see that the, the thing that in black ones is something we have already worked out, and the, the gray ones is actually we are, we are working on. And we try to cover the whole uh, part, but I guess we are actually good at doing the acceptance test because that is the most uh, requirement from our different departments from the headquarters. So we did that one a lot. It's this one, auto test part. But also we try to do some auto-designing, like what I just uh, say about translating to the uh, 
from the, uh, the designing uh, doc into some real designing part. And also we are trying to do some auto configuration so that uh, vendors do not need to actually go to on-site uh, configurations. We could do that automatically. Um, so uh, after this session, the next, uh, the next uh, uh, talk, talk, I will talk about uh, like uh, how we actually use auto pipeline to connect all different uh, components modules together and then so that we could provide some uh, automatic integration in this year's uh, uh, network uh, integration. So these tools actually we've already used in some uh, uh, different field testing, uh, like uh, we have our purchasing testing, uh, which uh, requires lots of uh, tests. So we actually do the VNF automatic testing for more than 400 times. And also, uh, for we also did a lot of testing for 5G field trials, and it really improves our uh, efficiencies a lot. So this one is actually try to cover the whole things about how we actually want the, uh, the, the, the auto to be. First is about the planning. We hope that we could having the unified uh, LD data and have it this one to translate into each different vendor's uh, data, hope people could talk with each other. And for hardware integration, we actually have uh, tried that out in this year's, uh, uh, few, uh, this year's deployment. Uh, we see it's a turnkey effort. And software integration, we actually are doing some uh, PUC with uh, multiple vendors about that. We hope that we could bring out uh, a proof of concept in next year's uh, Mobile World Congress. And the last thing is about automatic testing. So about that, this one is actually what I really want to share with you is uh, what we actually expect the future cloud integration should be like. We're thinking that uh, probably tradition traditional way is not in efficient enough. So we actually try to con convert this ideas into multiple people uh, in multiple communities and summits like this. So we're thinking that we should also borrow the, the, the continuous concept um, to, to future cloud. Like uh, we could call it as uh, continuous integration, continuous testing, and continuous delivery, which means that uh, the, uh, the, the, the components, the, 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 uh, the software should be uh, integrated in the vendor's labs or some uh, developed centers. And then it will uh, go to the, our integration labs and do the continuous testing. And then if that pass, it can eventually go to our field, our central, um, central office to do the continuous delivery. And we hope that eventually with auto, with the whole unified data that we defined, with the, the uh, standardized uh, working flow that we defined, eventually we could reach to this. And finally, here's some of our best practice. Uh, so this year, um, we actually built the uh, our NFV cloud is uh, it was uh, it was uh, it is actually distributed in eight provinces and for phase one includes like uh, more than twenty thousand servers so it's a huge one oh, and we will have phase two like uh, late later this year and our team has actually been engaged in this whole integration delivery effort in eight provinces since uh, March of this year. And auto is actually used in these eight provinces to provide automatic configuration of hardware switches and testing. So currently, I, I actually have to up update the slides because uh, we just finished the last province's uh, hardware integration. So it's, let's count it eight provinces for now. So we actually improved the whole efficiency. Uh, at first, uh, the uh, headquarters actually expect us to finish whole, all the whole hardware integration work, including the, the hardware uh, on the shelf, do the network collection uh, in six months. And uh, we actually try to improve that to four months, but uh, for the last province, because we have enough experience here, we shrink that time to two months. It still probably is too long for the people here, but hope we could improve. So that this figure actually shows how uh, we do the hardware integration. So first, uh, some preparation work, of course. Uh, we need to prepare for the data. Uh, vendor provide uh, detailed design data and uh, 
Also, we have that design document from our design department, and we translate into our low-level design. And then uh, we should have like uh, workers to have the servers, the switches to be ready on the shelf, and then uh, have do the uh, network connections automat uh, manually, of course. And then we will install uh, this auto server, and then after all, it's just uh, all being done by my uh, by by. Uh, by automatic way, like uh, normally uh, for a resource pool of abo about 900 nodes, that's uh, mostly the, the scale of our resource pool. Uh, one and a half hours uh, is needed to do the automatic configuration of uh, servers and switches, and we, we also need to do an overall check-in. Uh, I, I do not include the detailed check-in uh, things that we listed here, but uh, it actually includes all the IPMI uh, interface that we will use in the following software integration. It also includes some basic uh, functional testing for the servers and the switches. And also we, we, we check all the topology uh, uh, connections between the, the switches the, the, the and the uh, servers and check if they are due according to the uh, design. And after doing all these checkings, then probably will detect a lot of problems like uh, NIC damage, power module damage, a lot of different problems. And then we will do the iteration for uh, correction. So uh, normally this uh, probably will iterate like 20 to 30 times. Uh, and uh, the, the, the problems actually will shrink and eventually we'll have the final report. So this is uh, actually our first uh, successful experience in Nanjing province. Uh, first, we're testing on 1,000 uh, plus hardware, and we have 7,000 wares, uh, and we do that in one hour and 20 minutes. And the first time, we actually de detected more than 200 hours, but it, they are actually uh, be, uh, be uh, correct uh, in two days. So we actually have some uh, comparis comparison with, uh, like, human, of course. Human is something like... Uh, uh, spot checking, you cannot do full-scale checking, you cannot hardly uh, promise the accuracy. And also compare with some vendor tools. Um, I, I cannot say <laughs> which, is, uh, which vendor it is, but actually we have some good advantage over them. And here, here are some uh, like results that we ac actually get from uh, the, the eight provinces. Uh, we actually find some uh, major errors here is about network. That's something actually easy to expect. And also because that we do a lot of pre configuration and pre-test uh, in the lab, we actually avoid a lot of uh, uh, server and switch error on site. So most of the problems actually happen uh, at the networking. And this is how things actually iterate in provinces. The above uh, figure actually shows seven um, provinces problem accumulate how they actually iterate uh, in I guess uh, one week. You, you, you can see that the, the problems are just a shrink. And the, the, the this one is actually showing something happen in Sichuan province where the problem actually shrink after uh, in two weeks. So uh, some conclusions and takeaways. So uh, from our perspective, we're thinking that probably NFE integration is the last one mile problem for NFE. So improving this whole thing, the efficiency and quality is quite important for this whole NFE success. And second is uh, operators probably should t take some leading roles for the NFE integration in order to improve. We can hardly actually rely on a single vendor to work on that, but we need to collaborate with vendor, of course. After all, it's their software and they are the integration. Uh, and uh, standard working flow is actually important for us so that we could do the whole thing efficiently and improve the quality. And probably operators need to work closer with the integrators and the vendors for this uh, standardized uh, uh, flow. And unified data is also the, the quite important thing for the whole thing. And we're also thinking about uh, probably uh, we need to kind of uh, contribute this one to some uh, some uh, communities so that we could eventually build up a cross-vendor uh, unified data. 
And the uh, fifth one is about automatic tools. <coughs> it's uh, very important. Uh, like we have already done some uh, uh, exercise here. We do s we, ha we, we have some uh, experience. And we actually uh, we are open to open source and contribute some of our uh, uh, tools and automatic code to, uh, to the open source community. And uh, uh, finally, it's about the, the, the pork that we will do for uh, next year's MWC. I hope that will actually deliver our concept for the uh, continuous integration, testing, and delivery. And that's all. Any questions here? Get again. <laughs> yeah, for the hardware, for hardware testing, I, I don't think that there's any OpenFV tools actually exist. And for the software, we actually utilizing a yardstick before, but then it turns out that our uh, testing specification is way more complicated than we were doing <laughs> OPNFV. So we just, uh, uh, we use some of the yardstick and the others we just develop our own test framework. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time.